Shabbat Shalom. It's very special to be opening this Kabbalat Shabbat service here from Birmingham in a sanctuary that hasn't been used for many months except for High Holy Days. And now I'm here and with you all as well at the same time through the wonders of Zoom. And thanks to the wonders of Zoom, I also had a very beautiful experience just an hour ago when I joined a Kabbalat Shabbat service in Kibbutz Lotan in the very south of Israel, led by my daughter Tali and Lillian Crane Newman from the Liberal Jewish Synagogue and young people from RSY Netzer and South Africa Netzer, who were there on their gap year after a long wait due to COVID. And it seems appropriate to pay tribute to um, Rebecca, who I saw as part of the congregation and all of LJ Wynetsa, who helped them get there, but not only helped there, but through the many years of experience of LJ Wynetsa, gave them the confidence to be able to lead the Kabbalat Shabbat service in Kibbutz Lotan. And before continuing with the service, I want to go from the youngest members of our movement to one of the oldest, if not the oldest, and somebody who's been part of our congregation, at the heart of our congregation, for more than 70 years, and is now approaching her 100th birthday in a couple of weeks' time. And that is Ruth Shire. Our prayers to welcome Shabbat, our Kabbalat Shabbat literally means that, are about welcoming. The Shalom Aleichem, which will be sung in a moment, says to the angels who we imagine are entering our homes and our sanctuaries for the Shabbat, we say to them, Baruchem le Shalom, come in peace. And in the Lachad Odi, we consider the Shabbat as a bride and turn to our doors to welcome her into our sanctuaries and our homes again. And so that spirit of welcome, that spirit of hospitality is at the heart of Shabbat. And many years ago, when I first came to Birmingham as a student, it was Ruth and Hein Shire who welcomed me, who offered me hospitality in their homes on Shabbat. And Ruth remains warm and welcoming. Just before COVID, she was welcoming our BPS reading group to her home, always with generous hospitality. Michael is going to say more about 
her and Heinz's involvement shortly. But as just before Ruth blesses the candles, I want to bless you, Ruth, by saying, may the angels of Shabbat, who we're about to welcome, bless you always with peace. And may your home and homes of your children and of Miriam, where you are now, always be the sanctuaries of holiness that you have created, that you created for them, your children growing up, and which you have made a very special place for all your visitors over all the years. And now Michael is going to say a little bit too. Greetings to all of our liberal Judaism friends. I'm speaking to you from Boston in the United States where my family are here for this special celebration of the LJ Biennial and also, of course, of my forthcoming mother's birthday. Mum, we celebrate your upcoming 100th year with great joy and family togetherness. Along with all of the liberal movement gathered here together, you and my late father, Dr. Heinz Shire, attended, I think, every single LJ Biennial since they started in Cheltenham in 1977. He wouldn't have missed one for the world, and neither do you. And we all remember him with love and admiration. In your childhood, you saw the end of the Spanish flu. And now, thankfully, you're seeing the end of the COVID pandemic. And maybe that is why you were destined to become a nurse and offer comfort and healing to all those through many decades. You didn't grow up to be a liberal Jew. But leaving Germany and coming to England and meeting Heinz was the beginning of a lifelong devotion to progressive, pious, and positive Judaism. Getting married into the Shire family entailed a meeting with Lily Montague at Red Lodge, where being impressed with this new doctor-nurse couple, she officiated as your rabbi at your chuppah in the still bomb-devastated building of the LJS. You have engaged with Progressive Judaism and Birmingham Progressive Synagogue, Birmingham Liberal Synagogue, over 70 years, as Margaret said, in so many different ways. First, by loaning out Heinz to every conceivable committee and council, and then yourself taking up the mantle of synagogue librarian for so many years. Opening your home and, of course, Pre-COVID, there was not a Shabbat when you were not in your pew at BPS. And if you were not there, you were at Oxford with Miriam and with Nick. Breaking down walls is something you do instinctively. When you were invited to speak to new Syrian refugees in Birmingham, you said, I quote, I address you as the oldest refugee in Birmingham to the newest ones. You are welcome here as I and my husband were made welcome. But we then made our contribution to the betterment of the city, as you can do now too, and Birmingham will be the better for it. And so it is. Keep breaking down those walls, Mum. Happy, happy birthday. This is truly a Shabbat of delight, the Karat al Shabbat on egg the lights you're about to kindle for us and everyone else may kindle as well are a symbol of our joy this Shabbat at our friend LJ by uh, May their brightness lift our spirits and may our hearts with happiness and peace. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolom, asher pichanu, kubitzmutah mitzivanu, lahadli ner shal shabbat. We praise you, eternal God, sovereign of the universe, 
to sanctify us by your commandments and enjoin us to kindle the Sabbath light. Amen. Now, As we sing Yedid Nefesh, a song of loving, for God, longing for God on this holy day, please do join in with me in your home. Yedid Nefesh, Aparachamon, Meshach Abducha Eretzonecha. Oh, <laughs> 
חותם, יקלנה, ופרוס חביבי עלי, עצוקת שלומך, תאיר ארץ מכבודך, נקי לה ונשמח אפך, מה אהוב כי במועד פחוננו כי מעולם. Now we travel down the M40 to Buckinghamshire to the South Bucks Jewish community. Kabbalists of Sfat were inspired by the idea of Shabbat being like a bride that they could welcome into their midst. So much so that Shlomo Alkabetz composed his great song that we will shortly sing, L'Chadodi L'Krat Kala. And the Psalms around L'Chadodi remind us also of the natural world, the majesty of it and our place within it, and how just as God rested on the seventh day and created Menucha, repose, and rest. So too do we rest from our creative activities. I'm standing here in Buckinghamshire next to the Grand Union Canal, the rabbi of SBJC South Bucks Jewish community. And the canal also reminds us of what Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel describes as technical civilization, our ability to conquer space. And yet we know that conquering space is never really truly possible. And Shabbat reminds us, in fact, the canals also remind us of our place within the natural world, the symbiotic relationship that we have with that world, the delicate balance that is at play all of the time. So on this Shabbat, as we pause for the Psalms and for our service, we're reminded of the natural world, the majesty that Buckinghamshire actually offers us to see the natural world in its full splendor. And we take stock and we pause, and we breathe deeply. Come, let us sing to the Eternal One. Let our song ring out to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us acclaim our God with songs of praise. For you, Eternal One, are a great God, a sovereign great above all other gods. The depths of the earth are in your hand, and the mountain peaks are yours. The sea is yours, you made it. The dry land is the work of your hands. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us bend the knee before our maker. You are our God and our shepherd. We are your people and your flock. Today, the world would be redeemed if only we would listen to your voice. We continue now with Ha Dodi, the song which Neil mentioned earlier, composed by Rabbi Shlomo Alkabetz in the 16th century, whose words cause us to look forward to a time when the light of God will shine anew, bringing a time of peace when the world will be redeemed. <laughs>
Psalm for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Eternal One, to sing hymns to your name, O Most High, to tell of your love in the morning and your faithfulness in the night, to the sound of lute and harp, and to the music of the lyre. Your deeds fill me with gladness. Your work moves me to song. How great are your works, eternal God. How very deep your thoughts. The righteous shall flourish like the palm. Grow tall like the cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the eternal one, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall ever be fresh and green, proclaiming that God is just, my rock in whom there is no flaw. All of us at SBJC South Bucks Jewish Community wish you a Shabbat of peace and inspiration on the Liberal Judaism Biennial, as we now travel virtually to our friends in Nottingham and Rabbi Tanya.
Shabbat Shalom from Nottingham. We continue with blessings before the Shema. The first blessing before Shema reminds us about God as creator of the whole world. The second talks about God's love for all of us and each of us. It's good to be reminded how much God loves us so that it helps us to be more positive and creative in our life. And I will continue with the piece from Margie Peace's poem. Shema. We should love ourselves, for we are of God. We should love our neighbors as ourselves. We should love the stranger, for we were once strangers in the land of Egypt and have been strangers in all the lands of the world since. Let love fill our hearts with its clear, precious water. Heaven and earth observe how we cherish or spoil our world. Heaven and earth watch whether we choose life or choose death. We must choose life so our children's children may live. Be quiet and listen to the still small voice within that speaks in love. Open to that voice, hear it, heed it and walk for life. Let us remember and strive to be good. Let us remember to find what is holy within and without. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Mele Haolam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ari Faravim, Bechoch Ma Poter Sherim, O Vitvuna Meshane Iti, O Machalif Ata Zmanim, O Mesader Eda Kochavim, Be Mishmerotehim Baraki Kirzono, Bore Yom Valaila, Golel Or Mipne Hoshech, Bechoshech Mipne Or. O mavir yom, o mevir laila, o mavdil ben yom, o ben laila, Adonai tzavahot shemo, Baruch ata Adonai, amari faravi. Ahavat olam bit Israel Amcha ta Torah umit for hukim mishpati Otanu lemadta Al kinado Al 
tasur milenu le In Jewish tradition, it's not objects or even buildings that are sacred, but time itself. We mark the holiness sometimes with the help of objects and a building, but the time is holy independent of their use. In a year where we've not been able to meet in our buildings and the time of the working week has largely merged into one, the time held by the holiness of Shabbat allows us moments to break from the monotony and demands that we take time to rest. Let's lean into this moment in the holiness of Shabbat and let's take a breath together as we elongate that first line of the Shema and do close your eyes if you feel comfortable to do so. Shema. Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Shemkavodmahutonaolamvaetvehafta <laughs> Vahayula tot a fort bene necha, Uchtavtam al mazuzot fetecha, Uvisharecha. We'll continue with some moments quiet either with your own meditation or reading the words that will come up on the screen. La mahan tiskeru, vasi tehem et kol mitzvotai, vid hem kadoshi him lelohechem, ahani adonai elohechem, ashe hot seti et hem e eret mitzrahim, lihiot lachem lelohim, ani. Adonai Elohechem. All this we hold to be true and sure. You alone, Eternal One, are our God, and we are Israel, your people. You have freed us from oppressors and delivered us from tyrants. You led us out of Egypt forever to serve you in freedom. When we witness your power, we praised your name and gave thanks will willingly. We accepted your rule. Then, full of joy, we sang together. Mi kamo kha ba elim adonai mi kamo kha ne da ba kodesh norate hilo to se fele norate hilo to se fele adonai im loch le olam va et vene ema ki fada adonai et yakov uga allo mi yad khazak mi menu baruch ata adonai ga al israel 
And let's sing the first line of the Hashkivenu together. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom v'hamideinu malkeinu l'chaim. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom v'hamideinu malkeinu l'chaim. Grant eternal God that we may lie down in peace and let us rise up to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with your wise counsel and for your name's sake be our help. Shield us from sickness and war, from famine and distress and keep us from wrongdoing. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings for you are our guardian and deliverer, a gracious and merciful God. God are going out and are coming in that now and always we may have life and peace. We praise you, O oh God. May your sheltering peace descend on us and all who dwell on earth. And we will now go to Oxford Jewish Community with Rabbi Michael Shire. Thank you, Anna. I have um, moved from Birmingham to Oxford. I'm proud to represent Oxford as having been their High Holy Day rabbi for the last 14 years. And uh, I invite those people who are in Oxford to wave, say hello to everyone in the liberal Jewish family. Uh, it's wonderful to see you all. Uh, I'm still sitting here in Boston, uh, Massachusetts, however. We now come to the central part of our service, the tefillah or the amidah. This is the standing prayer. But these days on Zoom, standing might mean something else. Standing could mean standing up for a principle, standing for what is doing what is right, just standing up when we need to be an ally to those in need. Our tefillah speaks of those who came before us, who stood up, or stood by those who knew of what God wanted of them. The rabbis conceived the concept of zechut avot ve'imahot, living in the merit of those of our ancestors who knew God. We speak of Elohei Avraham, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, God of Abraham, God of Rebecca, God of Rachel, as if they each had different perspectives of God's presence and influence. Each knew God's purpose for their own lives in their own different ways. We today get the benefit of our ancestors' struggle and activism incredibly handed down for these past 4,000 years. We merit also from those nearer to us as well. And this Shabbat biennial, I'm thinking especially of Rosita's memory as part of Zichut Imahot, merit of our matriarch. She stood up for liberal Judaism's values and virtues, breaking down walls for small communities and individuals of Jews, enabling us to become a true family by creating this very biennial and leading us to become a voice for change in Anglo Jewry. We inherit a legacy of her steadfastness, her solid faith of liberal Judaism, and her belief in our strong future as a movement. Her memory stands forth for us tonight as we stand, physically or metaphysically, for the Amidah and the opening benediction.
Read me with me the first paragraph of the Amida. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avotenu Vimotenu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Elohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel Elohe Lea Ha'el Hagadol Hagibo Vahanora El Elion Gomel Chasadim Tovim Vakone Hakol Zoche Chaste Avot Vimahot May be Gula live nave and a hem, Leman Shamo be Ahava. Melech Ozea Moshe Umagain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Abraham, for Ezrat Sarah. God is known in many ways, God's presence is perceived in many dimensions. And in the second paragraph of the Amidah, we address God from the feminine perspective. At Gibura Leolam Havaya, Machaya Metim At Rabba Lahoshia, Mashiva Haruach, Umurida Hageshem, Mazricha Hashemesh, Umurida Hatal, Machal Kelet Chaim Bechesed, Machaya Metim Barachamim Rabim, Somechet Nofrim Varofe Cholim, Umatira At Asurim, Makayemet Emunata Lishene Afa. Mi chamocha ba'alat gvurot umi domelach gvura mamita mamichaya umetzmicha Yeshua b'neemenet at lachayot meitim brucha at chavaya machaya hameitim. You are holy. Awesome is your name. We have no god but you. Baruch atah Adonai, ha'el ha'kadosh. We praise you, Eternal One, the Holy God. And now we go to Rabbi Miri Lawrence, my friend and colleague at Ealing Liberal and Reading Liberal. Thank you, Michael. As we consider inclusivity this weekend, I'm mindful that this past year has magnified the challenges for those who feel on the margins of society and community life. As a parent of a young adult with autism, I've experienced firsthand the ways in which those with learning difficulties and mental health problems have felt isolated and lost access to vital support structures, including family and social connections. A number of national campaigns have addressed the difficulties for these people with a particular focus on loneliness and isolation. The difficulties experienced by those with disabilities have been framed in negative terms by a number of leading charities. Sense launched their Left Out of Life campaign, and the National Autistic Society's report, which they entitled Stranded, spoke of the forgotten families affected by autism during this pandemic. The titles of these campaigns resonated for me because every single day during the three lockdowns, my son phoned me and begged me to just come and see him, no matter how many times I explained the rules during the pandemic. I also know of many other families who described a similar feeling of desertion by their loved ones. As we consider inclusivity this weekend, my hope is that we can build on the work that liberal Judaism has done up until this point to include all of those who, for whatever reason, feel left out of life, stranded and forgotten. May we embrace all members of our community 
within the family of liberal Judaism, especially as we emerge out of lockdown. The Shamru Vene Yisrael et Hashabbat, La Sotet Hashabbat, Le Doratam Baritolam, Beni Uvein Bene Yisrael, Ot Hilolam, Tisheshet Yamim, Asa Adonai, Et Hashamayim, Beet Haaretz, Uvayom, Hashvi'i Shabbat Bayinafash. Eloheinu velohei avateinu, Rutsei vimnu chateinu, Kadosheinu b'mitzvotecha, Betein chelkeinu b'toratecha, Sabaeinu, Mituvecha, the summer came, the shoe are teha, the ta helebenu, the ta helebenu, the otacha, the helmet, the hanghi helenu, Adonai Eloheinu, the ahaba. Uberatzon Shabbat Kochecha Shabbat Kochecha Vianuchu Ba Yisrael Vianuchu Ba Yisrael Mekadeshe Shemecha Baruch Atah Adonai Makadesh Hachabat. Eternal God, be gracious to your people Israel, and in your love accept their prayers. May our worship now and always be acceptable in your sight. We praise you, O God, whom alone we worship in reverence. Modim anach nulach, sha'ata hu adonai lohenu, velohei avotenu le'olam ba'ed. So chayenu, magen yishenu, ata hu l'dov ado. Nodeh lecha unasapeh tehilatecha, al chayenu hamusurim biyadecha. Val nishmotenu hapugadot lach, val nisecha shebechol yom imanu. Val niflotecha v'tovatecha, Shebacholet Erev, Bavoke, the Sohorayim. Baruch Atah Dunai, Hatov Shimcha, Ulacha, Na'er Lodot. Shalom, Rav al Yisrael, Amcha. Shalom, Rav al Yisrael, Amcha, Tosim, Leolam. Ki ata hu melech adon, lechol ha-shalom. Ki ata hu melech adon, lechol ha-shalom. Shalom. May the Lord 
protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining moon. May you be like Ruth and like Esther. May you be deserving of praise. Strengthen us, O oh Lord, and keep us from the strangers' ways. May God bless you and grant you long life. May the Lord fulfill your Sabbath prayer for you. May God keep you from shield you from strife. May he in his wisdom always care for you. May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord you. protect and defend you. May the Lord preserve you from pain. May the Lord preserve you from pain. May the rest of the Lord bring happiness and peace. Oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. We now continue with a few moments for a silent prayer or meditation. just down the road from me um, to Kingston Liberal Synagogue, where I'm delighted to introduce my friend and colleague, Rabbi Rene Fertzel, who, along with Rabbi Rebecca Burke, are co-chairs of the Conference of Liberal Rabbis and Cantors, and Rene will be leading our Devar Torah.
Shabbat Shalom. You were probably expecting both co-chairs of a conference of liberal rabbis and cantors to address you tonight. But as the Yiddish proverb says, man tracht und Gott lacht. We make plans and God laughs. Sadly, Rabbi Rebecca is unable to join us tonight due to health issues. She's very sorry about that and she sends her apologies, but her doctors ordered her full rest. She will be back with us very soon, renewed and regenerated. In the meantime, Rebecca, we send you our love and our prayers for healing. Rabbi Rebecca and I discussed extensively about this Dvar Torah. What I am going to say is the result of this conversation. And you will also hear her voice, even though I think her English accent is slightly better than mine. Parashat Emor, this weekly parasha, begins with a ver very strict rules concerning the Kohanim, the priests, from the lineage of Aaron. For example, they cannot get close to a dead body. They cannot marry a divorcee, and so on. And the Torah to explain, they shall be holy to their God, and they shall not desecrate their God's name. We know that in other parts of the Jewish community, the division between Kohen, Levi, and Israel is still relevant, but not in our communities anymore. Ten years ago, the Central Conference of American Rabbis, which is the Conference of American Progressive Rabbis in the United States, North America, and elsewhere in the world, issued a rabbinic responsa, a rabbinic statement on this subject. Reform Judaism, as we could say, progressive Judaism, does not recognize a hereditary priesthood. This statement describes a fundamental aspect of our religious worldview. It means specifically that the tradition of priestly status is irrelevant to us as a religious category and plays no role whatsoever in Reform Judaism's observance today. Our common reform practice testifies to this fact. In our communities, the Kohen receives none of the privileges to which he is entitled under tradi traditional Jewish law and custom. Most notably, we have long since abolished the practice of granting him the first aliyah, that is, of calling him to the Torah prior to anyone else. By the same token, we do not enforce any of the stringencies that traditionally apply to the priest in matters regarding marriage and ritual purity. Since we do not look forward to the rebuilding of a temple and the resumption of sacrificial worship, we have no purpose or interest in perpetuating caste distinctions based in the ancient biblical cults. And in the absence of such a purpose or interest, it would arguably be unethical for us as a movement dedicated to an egalitarian vision of Judaism to maintain such distinctions in any form. What a perfect example on how progressive Judaism operates. We study, we question our tradition, and then we come to a conclusion. By its very nature, Judaism is progressive. Judaism has always been progressive. It is a work in progress, and no generation can pretend to hold the ultimate truth. But this freedom does not give us the license to do anything. We wanted to illustrate it with another rabbinic story, this time taken from the Talmud of Babylon, Bava Metzia 62a, and I quote, if two people are traveling together in the desert and one of them possesses a jug of water such that if both drink, both will die. But if only one of them drinks, he will reach civilization and live. This was the view of Ben Petora. It is better for both of them to drink and both of them to die so that one of them does not see his friend die. Until Rabbi Akiva came and taught, let your kinsman live with you, which implies that your life takes precedence over your friend's life. 
end of quote. Despite the conclusion it has reached, this passage raises more questions than it answers this ethical conundrum. Why is it only limited to two options? Have they explored all other possibilities? Maybe they could have waited another day or two to see if there was water somewhere. Or maybe simply some situations cannot find the resolution we'd like to find. If we want to break down walls, we cannot escape this constant questioning and re-evaluating of our tradition. I think we all agree that breaking down walls is a positive drive and a very progressive drive as well. But how? What are the underlying ethical principles? This process does not come without its challenges. There is the risk to try to follow the zeitgeist, the spirit of the time, without any critical approach. And then we are at risk to follow the current trends of our nosy world and to see simply our voice being lost and fading away in the, in the noise. We are also at risk to build other walls which we haven't thought about before. When we break down walls, what else do we risk breaking? Rabbi Rebecca drew my attention to an article published in the Times last Sunday, the 25th of April. India Knight wrote a piece entitled, Cancel Culture Brings Out the French Resistance. In this article, Indian Knight discusses cancel culture that she defines this way. Hardly anyone dares to stick their head up anymore, anywhere, especially if they're famous, and especially if they are a woman, even to express mild dismay or to ask a question, end of quote. A Princeton academic philosopher, Peter Singer, has created an academic journal called a journal of controversial ideas, which allows its academic contributor to submit paper pseudonymously, if they wish, to protect themselves from threats to their careers or physical safety. In the 16th century, the French writer Francois Rabelais wrote, science without conscience is but the ruin of a soul. We could paraphrase Rabelais by saying today, breaking down walls, implementing change without a strong ethical spine defeats the very purpose of it. Just as our forebears understood the limitations and exclusivity of a priesthood, so now we are understanding more nuances, more identities, and more call for breaking down walls that prevented us before. But Rabbi Rebecca and I hope to introduce a breath of caution. Let's trade carefully. As Jews, we are very privileged. We are the heir of an age old tradition that has taught us, if anything else, to question assumptions, to challenge stereotypes, to see beyond our unconscious biases and continually seek, as Amor calls us to, to be holy. On behalf of Rabbi Rebecca and myself, I wish you all a meaningful conference. And may we all leave this virtual space with a renewed sense of purpose and imbued with a positive energy that emanates from our movement. Kenye Ratson, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom and welcome to the sanctuary of Southgate Progressive Synagogue, our liberal Judaism community in North London, and our spiritual home for the past 78 years. We have now reached the concluding part of the Shabbat evening service, and we'll continue with the Aleinu and Kaddish. Aleinu l'shabach l'adon hakol. La ted gedola le otse bereshit, 
אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת, וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו. continue with the meditation before the Kaddish with the reading of a poem by the Israeli poet Zelda. Each of us has a name given us by God and by our father and mother. Each of us has a name given us by our stature and smile and by the clothes we wear. Each of us has a name given us by the mountains and the walls within which we live. Each of us has a name given us by the planets and by our neighbors. Each of us has a name given us by the sea and by the way we die. And to, today we especially remember our family, friends, and members of our communities who passed away at this time in years gone by. We also remember our rabbis, teachers, youth leaders, and those who played leadership roles in our communities and in liberal Judaism and who are no longer in our midst. In the following moment of silence, you're welcome to post names of your loved ones in the chat. Zichonam Livracha, may their memory be for a blessing. And we honor their names with the praise of God's name, with the words of the mourners Kaddish. Yid Gadal, Yid Kadash, Shemer Rabba, Balma, Divera, Hirute, Viam Lich Malchute, Bechayechon, Uviomechon, Uvechayed, Ochol Bet Israel, Bagala, Uvizman Karivim, U Amen. יהי שמי רבה מברך לעולם ולעולמי עולמיה, יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא, ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל, שמד קודשה בריחו, לאלה מן כל בנחתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ונחמתה, תאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מי שראיה, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, 
הוא יעשה שלום. עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל בני אדם, ואמרו אמן. We conclude with the Ladino version of the Enke Heloenu, performed by liberal Judaism singers and musicians, followed by Rabbi Sandra Kviet of Kehilat Shira Tzafon in Denmark, who will lead us with the Kiddush. Nuestro Señor, no como nuestro Rey, no como nuestro Salvador. Mi Heloheinu, mi Hadoneinu, mi Hamalkeinu, mi Hamoshienu, que no como nuestro Dios. Ken como muestro Señor, Ken como muestro Rey, Ken como muestro Salvador. No del Eloheinu, no del Adoneinu, no del Malkeinu, no del Moshienu, lo haremos a muestro Dios. Lo haremos a nuestro Señor, lo haremos a nuestro Rey, lo haremos a nuestro Salvador. Baruch Eloheinu, Baruch Adoneinu, Baruch Malkeinu, Baruch Moshienu, bendito nuestro Dios. Bendito nuestro Señor, bendito nuestro Rey, bendito nuestro Salvador. Atahu Eloheinu, atahu Adoneinu, atahu Malkeinu, atahu Moshienu. Tú sos nuestro Dios. Tú sos nuestro Señor, tú sos nuestro Rey, tú sos nuestro Salvador. Shabbat Shalom. Må vi have en rigtig fantastisk og dejlig Shabbat og en dejlig Bayanu. Um, Shabbat Shalom in Danish to everyone across the British Isles as well as our communities in Copenhagen and in Amsterdam. Um, we have reached the end of the service. We have reached the Kiddush. So please make sure that you have your wine ready as well as your challah. We have blessed a lot tonight. We have said blessings. We have thought of those who have made us who we are and who have made us into the blessings, hopefully, that we can be for others. So let us take a moment to actually bless each other. If you have the Siddu in front of you on page 563, let us do the community blessings. And as we do this, either look at somebody in the room with you or look at somebody on the screen so that we truly can bless by looking at each other. May God bless us and guide us. Let us seek truth, make peace, be kind and courteous in our words, just and loving in our deeds. A noble heritage has been entrusted to us. Let us guard it well. And let us all say together, 
Ya e Adonai pana velecha vichuneka. Isa Adonai pana velecha. Veyasem lecha shalom. We just thank God for our families and for our communities. For the bonds of love and loyalty and friendship which unites us and which keeps us close together in spirit, even when we are far apart. May we be modest in what we demand, generous in what we give, gentle in what we say this weekend, and considerate in all that we do. So may our homes and our communities be a place of security and happiness for us, of welcome and friendship for visitors, and a sanctuary worthy of the divine presence. Please raise your glasses and join me. Vayechulu hashamayim v'aretz v'chol tzevam Vayechal Elohim v'yom hashvi'i melachto asher asa Vayishpot v'yom hashvi'i miko melachto asher asa Vayvarech Elohim v'yom hashvi'i v'yikadesh oto Ki vo shavat miko melachto asher bara Elohim la'asot Bavrochata dona yeloheinu melech haolam, borei peri hagafen. Bavrochata dona yeloheinu melech haolam, asher kidishanu bimitzvota veratzavahanu, veshabat kotcho beahavahu bratzon hinchilanu, zikaron lemasei vereshit. כי הוא יום תחילה למקרא הקודש, זכר לציאת מצרים. כי באנו בחרת, ואותנו קידשת עם כל העמים, ושבת קודשך באהבה וברצון הנחלתנו. ברוך אתה אדוני. Mekadesh Hashaba. Lechaim, everyone. Let us now take our challah. And if you have one, do let's raise it high so we can all share, either physically or in thought, bread together. And let us say, ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, המוציא לכם מן הארץ. And for now, what is left to say is Shabbat Shalom, and fantastic bayenu, and let us all share learn and enjoy this wonderful weekend together. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom all. Thank you to everybody who just led the most beautiful Kabbalat Shabbat service. Um, I'm Rabbi Leah Jordan, one of the co-chairs of Biennial, and I just wanted to make a couple of announcements here at the end of our Shabbat service. The first is that um, in about eight minutes at 7.30, Rabbi B'nai Laffey is going to be in this Zoom room giving us a keynote speech that I'm very excited to hear. And there'll also be uh, space and time with her for discussion and questions and conversation. So it should be both something where we hear from her and we get a really interactive uh, talk at 7.30 here in seven minutes. And originally, we thought we might have time to do a bit of a meet and greet with our chair, Ruth Seeger, during this time. But we decided we wanted to give her really the full amount of time and for us to get a chance to really meet her properly. So we've moved that to tomorrow dinner, is what I understand. So come back uh, here to uh, dinner tomorrow during biennial to meet and greet with Ruth Seeger. And so uh, Rabbi Benet will be on at 7.30, and then at 9.30, Rabbi Judith Rosenberry will be speaking to us uh, about 
the theology of inclusivity and of liberal Judaism and asking us a lot of questions about biennial and about our, our lives. And I'm looking forward to that at 9.30. So thanks all so much and Shabbat Shalom.